At least four people have been killed as Ukrainian government forces shell residential areas of the city of Donetsk. At least ten people have been injured. In recent days, the situation has been escalating throughout the Donetsk region, with Kiev's troops saying they're only retaliating to aggression from anti-government forces. Murad Gazdiev shed some light. It hasn't been this bad in over a year. Ukrainian tanks, artillery and heavy weapons are back on the front lines, dueling to the death with anti-government forces. Thousands have either fled their homes or been evacuated, like these civilians. It is literally so dangerous, the shelling so intense, the people in the uh, more dangerous parts of the city where the shelling is fiercest are being evacuated from their homes in armored personnel carriers because it is unsafe to leave by foot or by car. The situation is bad in the village. The day before yesterday, two houses burnt down and one woman died. Shootings keep happening. We didn't leave earlier because we hoped that everything would get better. I don't understand why it all started again. Early it was okay, but from Friday the situation became worse. The gunfire is very loud. We are always an age. Most of these refugees didn't want to speak on camera. This is normal in East Ukraine. They fear persecution, repercussions at the hands of the Ukrainian government. It's this district, this neighborhood, that has borne the brunt of Ukrainian shelling over the last few days. And every few seconds we're hearing explosions. There's also small arms fire. Still, there are people left here without power, without water, without heating in this freezing weather, refusing to leave their homes. It is truly like a city of the dead. Only the most desperate and hopeless stayed behind. Our lives started during World War II. We thought we'd end our lives in peaceful times, but it didn't happen. Our own people are fighting each other. How is that possible? As we searched for other holdouts, an all-too-familiar sound pierced the air. The scream of rocket artillery. We left quickly, giving a lift to a young couple we saw running through the streets. There was nothing else to see. Civil war is back on. Morad Gazdiev, RT, in Donetsk. Ukraine. Elsewhere, the town of Avdievka has suffered severe shelling in the past few days, resulting in a number of soldier and civilian deaths. UNICEF reported that over 17,000 people were suddenly left without power or water. In fact, the area around Avdievka is part of what's known as the contact line, marking a 50-kilometer buffer zone. The Russian foreign ministry this afternoon claiming that using heavy weapons there is a direct violation of the Minsk peace agreement. In fact, a BBC war correspondent filmed the following tanks, posting the video on his Twitter account. He says these tanks do belong to Kiev. And during a UN Security Council special meeting, an OSCE monitor in Ukraine confirmed that tanks, along with other types of heavy weapons, have been seen near Avdievka. The highest number of explosions yet recorded by the mission. Most of these were recorded in the area of Ardivka and Yasnovata. In particular, the use of multiple launch rocket system, grats, mortars, and artillery is cause for added concern. The use of tanks has also been observed. However, during the UN meeting, Ukraine's ambassador said the only aim of Kiev's sudden military offensive is to bring peace. We are seeking peace and doing our utmost to take every step to bring it back to Ukraine. Destroying critical infrastructure and thus creating humanitarian disaster is a terrorist tactic aimed primarily at civilians. This tactic is not new for the Russian forces. Russia and its proxies in Donbass continue to block and undermine the peaceful process. The Ukrainian ambassador's comments were met with harsh words from Russia's envoy to the UN. 
Vitaly Cherkin said that Kiev is on, quote, a war path and is trying to completely undermine the Minsk peace agreements. And the coordinator of the anti-war answer coalition, Brian Becker, told us that Kiev's prepared to sustain collateral damage in order to push forward its political goals. Over the last government in Ukraine, the government in Kiev, is using military means, uh, including the cost of many lives, both those who are killed, those who are injured, those who are dislocated, uh, not to win, not to carry out a military victory that's not achievable, but in order to position itself diplomatically and politically. As the new administration in Washington comes into power and has to recalibrate U.S. foreign policy, towards Russia, which means most of all recalibrating U.S. policy towards Ukraine.